Hey guys, so today is spaghetti sauce. We don't like sweet spaghetti sauce and in the south it's um, some people like to put brown sugar in their spaghetti sauce and sweet peppers and stuff. Again, this recipe is a rough recipe. Uh, what's more important is that it has some acidity in each jar. In this case it's going to be lemon juice and Basically, I'm just gonna uh, blitz tons of tomatoes, uh, lots of garlic and onions, and since we don't have any green bell peppers right now, I'll put a couple of uh, red and yellow bell peppers in or whatever I've got, but I don't want too many of those because they tend to get sweet, and since we are going to simmer this spaghetti sauce for a long time to get it nice and thick and rich, we don't want a whole lot of sweet peppers because that's what tends to happen when you're uh, simmering tomatoes. As it gets thicker and richer, it can get a little bit sweet. So we prefer green bell peppers. Don't have it right now. So we'll do a couple of sweeter bell peppers. And I keep looking down, guys. I've got like boxes of tomatoes and peppers and stuff here. So instead, we are going to add some jalapeno into the spaghetti sauce. I'm not adding seeds because these peppers are a little bit warm, but I want some hot or uh, more savory peppers in this spaghetti sauce to offset the little bit of sweet peppers we have in here. So normally our first choice is green bell peppers. We don't have them, so we're making do. So a lot of my recipes really are more based on being able to preserve them either in the salt content or the uh, acid content, which would be uh, a citrus juice or a vinegar. And then the rest of the recipe is more based on what flavors you and your family like, what you've got in the refrigerator that needs to be used, what's coming from the garden, etc., etc. So I am going to um, try and make some notes just so you guys have approximate measurements. Again, I am an intuitive cook and I don't do, I don't go by measurements a whole lot. I more go by guidelines, uh, just um, ingredients, general measurements maybe, but mostly I go by taste and texture and consistency. So um, that may not be the easiest thing for folks new to canning, which is why I'm going to make notes as close as I can and I'm going to make a blog post with the recipe that corresponds to this and link it to this video. So now I'm going to uh, dice up quarter or eighth dice tomatoes to go in this giant pot here. Uh, dice some peppers and use my food processor on the onion and garlic. Let it simmer for a while and after it's cooked down a lot, I will then put it in the blender and make it as super smooth as possible. That's just the way we like our spaghetti sauce. Uh, my husband's not a fan of chunky spaghetti sauce, so that's just the way we do it. You guys, you can just simmer it in the pot, leave it as uh, chunky as you like, or you can use an immersion blender or a food processor or smoothie blender, whatever you've got to make it as smooth as you want. Again, most of this is up to you.
Okay guys, I've got the tomatoes uh, in the pot. They've been simmering. I've gotten all the onions chopped and the peppers chopped, although I forgot to record the pepper chopping. You don't really need to see that. I put them in the uh, food processor for a quick blitz and everything is simmering right here on the stove. So uh, I'm just going to let it simmer until the tomatoes start falling apart, basically. It smells really good in here. Uh, let it simmer until those tomatoes start falling apart. Then at that point when um, that's happening and some of the uh, liquid in there has been reduced, I am then going to put it through a blender to get super, super smooth, put it back in, put it in with the uh, seasonings and what I consider a secret ingredient, which is Worcestershire sauce. I know that sounds odd, but it's so, so good in spaghetti. We are not fans of sweet spaghetti sauce. We like super savory and umami rich tomato sauce. So if um, you're you're watching uh, your food intake, and I'm not talking about calories, carbs, I'm talking more organic, clean ingredients. If Worcestershire sauce is on your list or there are ingredients in most Worcestershire sauce is <laughs> sauces that are um, something you don't want to eat or maybe you're sensitive to, I find a good substitute is red wine vinegar and anchovy paste. You will have to do this to taste, but I swear it's the best substitute and it might even be better than Worcestershire sauce. It is so, so good. So if you need a substitute for Worcestershire sauce ever, try some red wine vinegar and anchovy paste. So uh, if you guys don't like tomato skins, you can totally take those off. I just find it really annoying and unnecessary when I'm going to blitz my tomato sauces or sauces down pretty finely or into a smooth, smooth, almost paste. I don't find it necessary. The only time I might would do that would be for tomato juice or for, and just like that, I lost my train of thought. Isn't that lovely? Um, yeah, tomato juice or diced tomatoes that you're going to uh, put up. Like if I was going to uh, put up large diced tomatoes, I might not love the skins on those so much. And so maybe I would take the skins off of that. Uh, but those are really, I think the only two instances I might would bother with trying to get the skins off of tomatoes. And it's not that it's difficult, it's just time consuming. And I'm a person who, if it's really not gonna matter, it's not going to bother us in certain preparations, I'm just going to blitz the skins in because I think there's a lot of nutrition and flavor there. Um, so if you do want to remove tomato skins, um, there are two ways you can go about it. The first method is my favorite if you're going to remove skins. It, this one is to freeze your tomatoes, cut a, an X or a cross on the bottom of your tomatoes, freeze them, and especially if you're only getting a few tomatoes a day right now, which isn't necessarily enough to put up a lot, save them for putting up later in the freezer when you have enough. And as they thaw, they'll come right out of their, uh, the tomato flesh will actually come out of their skins more easily if they have been frozen. So that I find is the easy way to do it. The second is that you can score them on the bottom Put them in boiling hot water for just a few seconds then put them in an ice bath and then peel them off by hand uh not my favorite method i i don't i don't do it for that so if there is a recipe or method that i can just blitz the tomato skins into it i'm usually going to do that uh just a quick side note for you guys um I am letting the tomatoes cook down and simmer right now. Uh, basically, I'm letting them fall apart. What I don't want to do at this point, if I didn't specify earlier, is you don't want to add in all of your herbs or, and your Worcestershire at this point. I wouldn't even add salt at this point because I'm going to simmer it. 
I'm going to really, really reduce it down. And if you put a lot of salt or strong herbs in there, the more you reduce that, the stronger that will get. And that could potentially be too salty, too herbaceous or whatever. So I like to let it simmer down, uh, sim simmer, simmer down, you all, uh, simmer as long as I can let most of the uh, tomato juice evaporate it, let it start getting thick, and then add my herbs and Worcestershire to it and my salt to taste at that point. thing about spaghetti sauce is you need some kind of acid component to preserve tomatoes because tomatoes are no, not as acidic as they used to be in generations past so I'm juicing several lemons and I'm going to put a tablespoon of lemon juice into each pint jar that I fill and you can do double the quarts.
guys, don't throw away all of these citrus peels. I'm going to put up another video one day soon showing you how to make easy homemade cleaner base. Super easy, super cheap, and it's using up your uh, citrus rinds in multiple ways so that you stretch your dollar on expensive fruit. And tons of lemon juice here. So, so don't waste your lemon juice, whatever you don't use in each of your jars for preserving. Just put it in a jar in the refrigerator. You can use it for marinades and uh, dressings later, or you can uh, make lemonade with it. It's super tasty, no need to waste it. And look guys, I'll even, um, I, every three or four weeks I'll buy a glut of citrus because I cook with it a lot. and. Um, during canning season, I use a lot of juice. And so what I'll do is I'll split, I'll use what I need to cook over two or three weeks. I will then save these in a freezer Ziploc bag. And um, as these get a little bit old and just not so pretty on the outside, there's nothing wrong with them. Juice them and I'll freeze them in small containers uh, for canning projects later or just put in the fridge to use later. Five minutes, guys. Here we go. All 
Okay, just uh, some quick notes on the recipe for this spaghetti sauce. I've got my first batch uh, in the water bath right now. 35 minutes for pints, and I believe it's 40 minutes for quarts. So, the thing about this spaghetti sauce, the only thing that's really required to preserve this is the level of acidity. So that's why the uh, lemon juice, which I'm staring at right here, <laughs> uh, the tablespoon of lemon juice per pint or two tablespoons per quart. So uh, as far as the other flavors, the herbs and everything I use in this spaghetti sauce, most of them are traditional flavorings in here. The unusual thing is the Worcestershire sauce I add to this recipe. I know it's a little weird, but it's so, so good. It gives it this richness and this umami that I can't quite get with anything else in spaghetti sauce. And we make ours slightly spicy. We don't like sweet. Uh, and I will be linking a blog post with the corresponding recipe for this. Um, here's the thing. If you don't like it soup spicy, leave out the red pepper flakes or cut the black pepper in half. You don't like it super strong with onion and garlic, cut it in half. You don't like it super herby, cut the uh, herb measurements back by half. Start with half. If Worcestershire weirds you guys out or you just don't want Worcestershire, cut it in half or leave it out. The flavoring is up to you guys. The only thing that's really required for the preserving part is the lemon juice inside the jars before you put them in the water bath canner. But literally, um, most recipes, as long as you have a certain level of salt or acidity in them, you, you can pretty much flavor it up however you want to. You can do the texture however you want to. We like ours, these are a little bit hot, I just packed these. We like ours super smooth and rich and reduced with lots of flavor, lots of umami, and a little bit of spice. So any flavors you don't care for, you can leave out, you can cut in half, whatever. The only thing I wouldn't change is maybe the amount of salt and the lemon juice in it, just because the lemon juice gives it the acidity it needs to be able to preserve it in the water bath canner. So as I was editing this video, I realized I did not sign off with you guys, which I think has actually been the case for several days. Uh, I've just been in the uh, mad mania hysteria of preserving, preserving, preserving. Like today is, I think today is day 10 or 11 of preserving for me. now. This is several days after the fact of a lot of these videos that you will be seeing, but I realized I hadn't signed off on a lot of them. So uh, as I'm sitting here editing, I wanted to thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope your family loves this recipe. It's one of our favorites in particular. Um, this spaghetti sauce, we like it so much that we use it obviously as a pasta sauce. We love it for uh, 
meatballs to use as an appetizer or to make like a sub style hoagie or put it on sliders. So, so good. We love it uh, for marinara style dip for like cheese sticks. Um, let's see, I know we've used it for all kinds of things. Pizza sauce, we love it as pizza sauce. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys love this pizza sauce. Pizza. I hope you guys love this spaghetti sauce as much as we do.